much that I could pick out all year long and not feel guilty at all. In fact, I love pork so much, I even raised my own pigs. <laughs> Today, I want to show you all the pleasure of pork. And here to help me is my good friend, Pinky the pig. <laughs> Now, it's my pet. The first dish I'm going to show you is Jingdu pork chop or Jingdu pork spare rib. All you need is approximately one to one and a half pound of nice pork or pork chop or even use pork spare rib. If you're concerned, you can trim the fat off. Okay, let's trim the fat off. Fat is not good for your body and your soul. You trim it off, trim the pork fat so you can do whatever you want, okay? And then you cut into bite-sized pieces and an end go like this. One, two, three, okay? And you do it faster. One, two, three, done. And then after that, you got to pound it because you want to tenderize it, okay? You tenderize it with your knife Or you can do it all together, like this. Or you can... Can you imagine how boring this is? Now, if, if you're not in a rush, you tenderize it like this. You just massage it. Get in the right mood. <laughs> this is when you're not in a rush. Okay? Make sure the tenderize. And also, not only you're tenderizing it, you're also making it easier for the seasoning and the marinade to permeate into the meat. And then after that, we transfer this from here to here. Huh? Done. And then, when this is done, we're going to marinate this with the foreign ingredient. With time with one tablespoon to two tablespoons of dry sherry. And some cornstarch, okay? And also use about one or two tablespoons of soy sauce. Look at this. Marinate this right here. I always like to marinate it with my fingers because it's much easier to do. But today I feel like using chopstick because chopstick is a very, very important cooking utensil. Stir this and then I put an egg right here. Bit it up once again. Exercise. Try it at home, it's fun. Put a tiny bit of this in, and then this way, we can coat this with cornstarch or flour. In the meantime, I'm gonna heat up my wok because I'm gonna save time. Heat up my wok, or you can just use a frying pan, but this is good, this is a wok pan. You coat this with a tiny bit of flour or cornstarch, more, more. Mix it up, okay? And then you will pan fry this. Why you pan frying this? If you have time, you can make the sauce. But when you do it at home, you should make the sauce ahead of time, okay? Let's rinse my finger. And this way, I can get close to Pinky again. <laughs> <laughs> now, porks are getting very, very popular in recent years because it's a delicious, white meat, they call it an other white meat. Make sure this is hot enough. When it's hot enough, you put it over here. I love to raise pigs because pigs make better households, pets, than chicken. <laughs> My neighbor have two pigs running around. <laughs> <laughs> now no, make sure to put it in, you can use basically pan fry, or you can use shero fry. This shero fry uses a tiny bit more oil. And put this right in here. One. Don't drop it in too fast, otherwise they splash. So it's kind of slide it in. Good technique. Look at this. Put it around, put it, put it. Do a whole bunch. Okay, depends on how many people you have. 
the more people, the more pieces. In the meantime, we're gonna, oh, look at this, move around, move around. And then, you're gonna make the sauce for the Jing Dao. This is what they call Jing Du sauce, okay? I use approximately two to three tablespoons of ketchup. Use some soy sauce, about one tablespoon of soy sauce. Use some Worcester sauce sauce, Worcester sir sauce. A tiny bit of dry sherry. Oh, this is good. Hot and spicy hot pepper sauce. And if you want, you can use a tiny bit of garlic and ginger and a tiny bit of sugar to make this sauce, okay? Let's have some garlic and ginger. Ah, ginger, done. Ah, garlic, done. And pick, make sure. Now the good, the important thing about this particular dish is make sure you turn them upside down, okay? So get even nice browning. Just like you go to a beach. You occasionally turn them around so you have an even suntan. Look at this, this is how beautiful. Everybody can see this. When it's getting there, you are gonna get ready your garnishing plate, put the sauce in, and let it braise for a few seconds. Look at this. Wow, can you hear the sizzling sound? Wow, this is what you call excitement. <laughs> I love it. I want it to be that way. When this is done, <laughs> put it right over here. Look at how beautiful. This is a good dish for do. It's succulent, delicious. Just put it right in here. A scrumptious Jing Do pork chop. You know the saying, no guts and no glory. It also applied to Chinese cooking. I'm in my good friend's meat market in Chinatown. I'm gonna tell you all about Asian cooking, inside out. When I was growing up, my mother never threw anything away. This golden rule of Chinese cooking. So today, I'm gonna show you things that you don't throw out. You gotta find something interesting to make. For instance, we have the honeycomb tripe. We have the book tripe, looks like paper, that's why book tripe. Then we have the ligament or tendon of beef. And then we have the milk, one of the most important internal organs. And then we have pork liver and a little pig's tongue. This guy never talked back. And a little pig pork kidney, and this is the heart, of course. I left my heart in San Francisco, Chinatown. Here we have the roasted pig skin, pig's blood, which is parboiled, so that's why it is, looks like a custard. And then we have the pig's intestine, and then the pig's stomach. You normally brace it or stew it, pig's feet. Oh, one, one, one of the pigs is not gonna go too far. And then this is the duck web, raw duck web. Look at this, dong, dong, dong. And then the little brain. In Chinese cooking, all you take is a little brain and a lot of imagination to make anything easy to stomach. For the more conservative palate, this next dish is for you, and you, and you, in the audience. We're gonna make spiced orange flavor pork chop, okay? This particular dish is so good. Everybody can make it at home, it's easy, it's delicious. Everybody, to save time, I'm gonna turn on my heat, turn on my burner, so this way it get heat up while you're getting everything ready. Here, I have some pork chops. We are gonna quickly, once again, slightly pound this a little bit. Now of course you don't have to make any noise, you can just say, <laughs> marinate this. 
with a tiny, tiny bit of five spice powder and salt, okay? Good. Tiny bit, mix it, five spice powder and salt. Mix it up, let it marinate for about half an hour, okay? Make sure they are nice and done. And then you can braise your pork chop over medium heat to save time. Okay, doesn't have to be too hot. Let's put one chop here, another chop over here. Okay. Turn them around, move it, and then you can turn one up, and then turn another one up. See how fast. And then in the meantime, we're gonna get ready to make the orange sauce, the spicy orange sauce. Here we have garlic, okay? And we also have ginger, okay? We don't need the whole piece. Minced garlic and ginger. Wow, I got excited. I've never, never seen garlic get so excited. The jumps, the first time. When this is nice and done, also have some crushed chili, okay? I'm gonna get some orange sauce. Make sure some get oranges, get rid of the seed. And we'll make the sauce. Here, we have some orange juice, about half a cup of orange juice. Some chicken broth, okay? Tiny bit of sugar. And if you want, you can also use a tiny, tiny bit of lemon or orange zest to give some zest appeal to it, right? Very nice. You can use lime too if you want. And then, when this is hot, and then this is done. See, very easy to turn them around. Make sure this is hot. And then, in the meantime, always make sure. When this is hot, you turn it up, thicken it up, stir it. And then, at the same time, put a tiny bit of garlic and ginger if you want, and also some chili to make it nice and hot, okay? Very important to make sure this is thickened. That means you should do this with cornstarch solution, or you can use tapioca starch, or you can use arrowroot starch, or you can use water chestnut powder, whatever you have. And don't use baby powder. <laughs> okay, stir this, make sure this is wonderful and easy to do. And this is nice. Once again, turn them up, turn them upside down. Very easy to do, okay? In fact, right after this is done, we're gonna put the sauce. Look at this. This is how you braise it, make it very delicious. Let it braise. Wow, look at this. Let it braise for a little while. Or if you want, you can cover this up. While you're covering this up, I'm gonna make a dish I call Thai pork and basil stir fry. Here, I have some lean pork, some Thai basil. Thai basil has a slightly stronger anise flavor than the regular basil. Either basil is basically the same. How many of you have ever tried the um, Thai basil in the audience or at home? Everybody, I am so excited. <laughs> and cut it up, cut it up, cut it up, okay? and put it right over here. Cut it up, cut it up, cut it up, cut it up. And then you can stir fry this. Let's put it right over here. In the meantime, we can get some basil and green onion ready. One, two, three, four. Set it aside, put them all right here. So now this is exciting. I don't know how hot you want it to be, okay? This is sereno. One. Two, three, this is very hot. How hot do you like it? Hot, more hot. Hotter? This audience is hot. But don't worry, we always come well prepared. Okay, this is gonna be very hot. So we are gonna quickly 
stir fry this, okay? Why we are bracing this, okay? Very, very simple dish. Very, very simple, easy, stir fry with a tiny, tiny bit of oil, okay? Hot and spicy garlic and chili. Wow, this is gonna be very hot. When it's done, you put the pork right in here, okay? Use a chopstick to make sure. Now, the important thing is always make sure your wok is hot, and then you put the oil in before you put the meat in so the meat would not stick to the wok. Stir, stir. When this is done, we'll get ready to serve this. This is ready. This is ready. We'll show you. This looks good. When this is done, we shut it off and we'll transfer to this gorgeous looking dish. One pork chop and two pork chop. Put it right over here. This is really beautiful. <clears throat> now, we have another dish. We have some basil. Put it in at the last minute. Stir this. Very easy to do. It doesn't take too long. Make sure you stir. Allow uniform cooking, okay? When it's done, you put it right over here, and this is how beautiful the dish looks. Pork, basil, stir fry, Thai style. I was in such a rush this morning that I didn't even have time to shop for all my vegetables. Lucky for me, I have a good friend who knows Chinatown inside and out, and she loves to shop until she drops. And please welcome the walk with the Chinatown expert, my good friend, Sherry Fong Torres. Oh, welcome, welcome to the kitchen. Wow, Thank look goodness. at all this shopping. Well, really, I'm so glad that you come because I really need all this stuff. Martin, this place looks like a pig pen. That's why I always clean up to make sure it looks <laughs> of a clean pig pen. Here, we, I, oh, need, I need some... Let's take this out. Oh, yeah, let's, let's put them down so oh, we can set it aside. Okay. Fortunately, we have some oyster sauce, so uh, this hoisin sauce, sauce, some Chinese rice wine, and also a tiny bit of Chinese sausage, and oh, this is what we need. We need some... Uh, some of the greens. Greens. The this, greens. the rest, we can put it in the... Next course. Pantry. Okay. Okay, I'm so glad you can come because this is something that we really need for this wonderful succulent stuffed pork. What I'm gonna do is, we're gonna assign some responsibility. I'm gonna chop, you're gonna walk, you're gonna do it together, okay? All right, First Martin. of all, we're gonna take, let's uh, get some of these and put it in the, uh, okay. let's put them all together. And I'm gonna cut up some Chinese sausage. And then, when you get a chance, we can heat up the wok. Just, Where are your spoons? Well, well, you don't need spoon, this is no measuring. what you call Perfect Measure mix. precisely like that. That's another drop. One, two, okay, three, good. four, five, six, seven. Cut it up, and then you can go. Let, let's uh, let's get ready. There you go. You make sure you cut it up, put it up, and sure, this is your walk right okay. here. Okay. Now, when this, they turn it up, and then also let's cut up some onion. All right. We'll put some. Ready for cooking? Oh, don't need no. oil. Well, don't need oil. It's got the we oil in the left one already. And then we we'll cut up this, and we will cut up. <laughs> wow, Whoa. look at this. Let's look at that. Now I know that sh I do some Chinatown trip for some of the students, some guests, but Shirley does it every, every day. So Shirley can give some advice. I know that you don't have, you don't have time to shop, so I thought I'd do some for you today. Good. Yep. A lot of people coming from all over the world to go to Chinatown. Oh, they sure do, and they love it, and, and we love giving the tours. It's not just for the food, you know. There's a lot of history and culture and architecture, and so we show, show them around. That's great. See, I walk around Chinatown when I have time because I find out a lot of things. Nowadays, sometimes you may not mm. find something in a regular market. You can always find certain exotic traditional ingredient in Chinatown. And, and also, I think once you said earlier, when you go to Chinatown, you see all the sounds and the oh, size of Chinatown. Sounds, aroma, the people. Um, Let's put them all together. 
and some water chestnut. We crush the water chestnut. Looking that's... good, Martin. Oh, that looks good. We'll crush this up. Huh? Done. Huh? This is how you crush water chestnut. Done. Make sure you put your hand over here. Huh? So it won't fly all over the place. Otherwise, you know, by the time you finish, you lose half of it. Oh, I only there you lose go. one third. <laughs> Look at this. Oh, okay. Throw it it's in. going to be very, very all good. All right. How's okay. our seasonings? Not in yet. The meat, in the meantime, we are going to put a tiny, tiny bit of these. Look at this. Let's clean this up. While you're stir frying that, we're going to butterfly my pork. Okay. This is how I butterfly my pork. I use do it one. That's a pork loin. Okay, that's pork loin. Very pounds. nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is as easy as one, two, three. Look at this. Look at this. Very nice. One, two, three. Now, when it's done, you marinate this a tiny bit with this with rice wine. Sherry sure, just brought us some rice wine. Time of five spice powder. Nice. Look at this. Nice and easy to do. Oh, I should take and then, this out now. When this is done, let's put it over there. Yeah. We can put them all together. Also, sprinkle a tiny tiny bit of white pepper or White and black pepper. Black pepper. Okay. Mm. A little wine. rice vinegar. And then slightly thicken it up. But okay, a little corn starch. this is what you there call you dry thickening. When well, this is nice and done, we'll put it right over here. And it's done. Look at this. Let's put it in a bowl. Okay. And we can roll it up. And then we're going to tie it up. Okay. Look at this. Getting everything ready. This is really neat because we're using ingredients that aren't necessarily purchased in Chinatown. You can That's buy right. these you can buy ingredients anywhere. anywhere. Now let's put them all together. Let's roll it up. Okay. Then... It's going to be a hot roll. That's good. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> the important thing is when you go and shop in Chinese store, Asian store, a lot of time some people ask me, Martin, if I don't speak English, what am I going to do? So, Maybe you can give us some insight. Well, I think if you don't speak English or you speak very little Chinese, you should first of all know what you want to buy. You should know. Idea. You should know your ingredients. So you don't run around the world. <laughs> and then when you go in, um, just just look uh, just look around until you, you get what you need. You don't need to need. You don't have to talk to the uh, shop owner at all. That makes sense. <laughs> Sesame oil. Now, something like sesame oil, though, you have to be careful because you have to get the kind that's uh, toasted for Chinese cooking. There are two different types of sesame seed oil. Let's tie it up so we can get ready, so we can roast this. Are we going to cut this with a cleaver or what? Oh, hi. Simple as that. Very good. <laughs> Let's tie it up, whatever you want to do. In the meantime, while we're tying this up, we have roasted another one in the oven because we have 235 people <laughs> in the studio audience. We're going to go over there and get it. Go get it. Wow, look at well, this. This is oh. absolutely tremendous. OK. Now, we are going to quickly, this is so hot. It is hot. <sighs> make a living and then now this is tied also tied by a uh, Shuri and Shuri learn how to do this when she was in Girl Scout. <laughs> All right, Martin. Turn them around, put them around and then we're gonna, I'm gonna ask you to do me a favor to look at how beautiful this is. When this is done. It is lovely. Look at this. Cut oh it out. My. Cut it out. Cut it out. And then we put it over here and we garnish this. Let's garnish yeah, this. This garnish is uh, Chinese Look broccoli. I wish President Bush would try it. This sure is delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us today for the pleasure of pork. And we are big out in the hot heaven. <laughs> and thank you, Shirley. Wow. <laughs> Until next time, it's Yen and Shirley Kim. So can you. Join in. <laughs>